Hey there, everyone. Uh, this is my uh, demonstration of a PTO1 insert mod. This is uh, going to be two different modifications, a pre-fader and a post-fader modification. Um, you know, wanted to shout out people that have kind of come before me and done this mod. Um, this is a little bit different than the ones I've seen on the Reddit forum, um, where I just basically splice into the cable. I don't actually drill into the, uh, the breadboard uh, or solder onto the connections on the breadboard. Um, uh, obviously, you assume all responsibility. I'm not going to be responsible if you electrocute yourself or, uh, you know, uh, break your turntable. So, um, and then uh, as far as who I am, I'm on Wobby Music. Here. You can hear my music in the background here, just some, some beats I made and I have up on Spotify. Uh, so if you dig it, um, follow me on Instagram or Spotify. Uh, you can kind of go from there. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. You guys are all familiar with the PTO1 turntable. Uh, by Newmark, and uh, you know it's pretty sick. Um, I installed a uh, uh, Jesse Dean uh, custom fader on mine. Um, if you've done this, then you're probably familiar uh, with how to open up a device and things like that. Um, but uh, go through the process flow or the signal flow here. Um, sound comes out of the needle uh, from the vinyl and uh, goes through the tone arm. From the tone arm, presumably there's a preamp in the, inside the turntable that converts that signal from a phono signal to a line level signal. And then from there, that goes into the crossfader and to the output. Kind of a simplified diagram. Uh, but this is to demonstrate that <clears throat> basically what I wanted to do is um, have some plugs that come out of the turntable that I can plug into a digital vinyl system like Serato um, and use it with the di device. Um, for my digital vinyl system, I'm actually using something called PyDeck. Um, it's a uh, basically a Raspberry Pi computer um, on the bottom here with the Pi Deck distribution installed. Very easy to install, very easy to use. Um, I also have this sound card um, on the, the Raspberry Pi uh, that provides inputs and outputs. Um, I have the signal from the modification coming out of the turntable pre-fade into the Raspberry Pi here, and the signal coming out of the Raspberry Pi goes back into the insert, to the input of the insert um, on the Raspberry Pi. And then on the top here, I just have a little touch screen uh, that allows me to um, use the uh, Pi Deck software um, without a keyboard and anything like that. So a little five inch touch screen works great. Um, I just plug a USB drive with MP3s on it and I can use, um, use the Pi Deck as a digital vinyl system, just like it's regular vinyl. Um, I'm also doing a, an effect loop, uh, post fader effect loop. So this allows me to send a signal out of the uh, turntable into uh, a reverb or a delay and then back into it. And then that goes to the output. Um, my goal with this is to set up switches. Um, I, I, I completed this modification. I didn't install, install any switches, uh, but on a DVS side, I want just a, a, a flip switch where I can turn on and off um, the digital vinyl system and kind of have an irregular mode or turn on the digital vinyl system. Uh, for when I want to use vinyl, I obviously don't want the digital vinyl system activated. On the effects side, I want to install a little uh, momentary arcade style switch uh, so that I can send the signal to a reverb or something like that. So I didn't include that in this modification. I'll kind of keep things simpler for, for basically how things work. These are where the positions where I put in uh, the eighth inch jacks. So uh, for the post fade and the pre fade, each of those has two uh, eighth inch jacks, one for input and one for output. And of course, that's a stereo signal. And so you can see the modification from the outside here. Um, this is the pre fader uh, input and output jacks. Uh, obviously, I should label those as, as input and output would be good. Um, this is the post fader input and output jacks. Um, on setting this up you want to make sure that you know if you don't have anything going through the loop and you don't have a switch installed um, this is the post fader loop and I, I basically have um, an eighth inch cable that goes directly uh, into the loop so that I complete the loop uh, without a signal going through obviously you wouldn't hear any sound uh, coming out of the device either on the pre fade or post fade so if you don't have a DBS system or a uh, effect on, on that, you'll have to either install a switch to turn it on and off or install, uh, just put in a, a little eighth inch wire to um, both ends. Let's get into it. Uh, when you open it up, this is what it looks like. There's plenty of tutorials on how to open up and uh, 
disassemble your unit. So I'll leave that to, um, to other YouTube videos. Um, and this is the part of the um, turntable that we're looking at the board at the top right there. And so when we look at the board here, um, we've got um, this little plug that comes out and you can even see here, it says L, G, R, uh, that's left ground and right signal um, on each side. So these are the basically the six wires that we'll be using for the modification. Um, on the left side from the, uh, from, from the angle of viewing the letters uh, is the pre-fade. So that's the, um, the signal going through the turntable before it gets to the fader. And then on the other side, we have the post-fade. Um, so what we end up doing is we just take that wire, uh, I cut it in half and um, start splicing things together. Here's a little closer look of the splice. Um, and if you look at the wire, um, it's just a gray wire. Once you cut it in half and strip it um, and uh, kind of you'll see three wires and you'll want to strip the ends off of the, the red and the white wire. That will be a, a, a unshielded, um, uncovered wire uh, that is the ground wire. Um, so that's pretty, pretty important. And ground wire is basically like a common ground. So that's, you know, shared across all, all the ground points on, on the device. So we plan to plug in eighth inch plugs, right? So uh, basically what we want to do is we want to install uh, eighth inch female jacks on the turntable. Um, I use these little guys. They're great because they are solderless. You just screw in the terminals and you're good to go. Um, and it makes it a little easier. They, they have a little bit of a bigger footprint, but uh, I, I, I like how that kind of works. So you see RTS on here, that stands for ring sleeve tip. And on a standard eighth inch cable, you have uh, what's called RTS ring tip sleeve. Um, and that correlates to the sleeve, which is the common or ground. Uh, the ring is the uh, right signal and the tip is the left signal. So yeah, we're just going to uh, plug these in, uh, take the red wire and the white wire and plug them into the uh, ring and tip inputs of the jack. And I just soldered um, the uh, wires together at the joints here and, um, you know, good to go. So that's kind of how that looks. Uh, do the same thing on the output side as the input side. Um, and then in the end, you're gonna uh, bring it all together to connect the grounds all together. And uh, again, common ground. So however you wanna do this, I basically took the signal from the ground uh, on both sides, uh, spliced them together and soldered them, and then um, sent it over to the input and then from the input to the uh, output so that it's all shared. So this is the uh, kind of how, how the modification looks at the end. Um, you can kind of see here, this is um, the soldered ground for both sides. This uh, this wire here goes to the input jack, and then these two wires here um, go to the output jack. Um, and then you have the common ground there. Hopefully, you can see that. Again, this is how the completed mod looks. Um, I used just electrical tape to tie them all together. You definitely don't want those um, uncovered. Um, metal parts to you know touch anything else including the ground that causes short circuit if you want to make sure they're covered you can use um you know wrap or something like that on the right here you can see how the the jacks are mounted and how the inputs go in um, and uh, pretty easy to do from there and this is uh, just a little closer look at the at the, the wires taped up it's pretty much it um you know i didn't wouldn't say this is too hard of a modification Took me about an hour and a half, two hours to, to you know, kind of dig into it, figure things out um, and splice the wires and, and get everything together. So that wasn't too bad. Um, and that's really about it. Hopefully you enjoyed this and got some use out of it. If so, uh, you know, shoot me a shout out or a follow on Instagram uh, or whatever you want. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, from there, I appreciate you and I hope you uh, have a great day. Here's a little demo that I posted yesterday on Instagram of the completed system. Uh, I guess I should show you what's going on here. Again, I have the output from the insert going into the input of the Pi Deck and the output from the Pi Deck going back in. You can see here on the post fader output, I just have 
a eighth inch plug going um, from the output to the input to complete the loop because I don't actually have an effect in there right now. And again, I want to install switches to, to make that a little more seamless. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Here's the, uh, here's the demo. I really wish you'd quit dicking around. <laughs> I know. One more thing real quick is that uh, you'll notice that I have a little iPhone on the bottom here. This is not connected to the system at all. I'm just using this with the uh, Table Beats app to play some beats and, and uh, have an eighth inch cable going into the auxiliary in of the PTO one. So that's not really part of it. Just needed something to jam along with for the demo. Uh, again, thanks a lot. Have a good one.